the Joe Rogan experience? The way I look at uh, like seasons of racing is just kind of two key ones. You have like your spring, early summer, and your kind of late summer, fall slash winter seasons. So there's kind of two. Uh, so I'll basically just sacrifice one of those seasons for this. And I probably won't, I mean, I don't really know what to expect because I've never done anything quite like this before, but, um, I'm, I'm planning on dedicating one of those seasons towards that exclusively. So Jamie's then, nodding over here. He's got I was something. Digging through this article is pretty interesting. So it started here with distance walking was a huge spectator sport in, in the, the late, late 19th, 19th century? century. They would bet money that like you couldn't do it. <laughs> For instance, that's how everything this, starts. Yeah. Look at this quote. Money. <laughs> People followed it like it was the World Series. So it continued on until the Great Depression and World War II, probably because people didn't have enough time to waste their time doing this. And then yeah. it picked back up in the late 20th century, and that's when you had to prove what you were doing. Look at this. The first known transcontinental journey took place in 1896 by a mother-daughter duo huh. who, needing to raise money to save their farm in Spokane County, Washington, responded to a $10,000 public wager that no one could make it by foot across the country. Helga and Clara Espy left home with $10 between them, as well as a compass, a knife, a curling iron, and a Smith & Wesson revolver. <laughs> Don't fuck with those ladies. <laughs> They'll curl your hair and shoot you in the dick. They made it to New York City seven months later, but for reasons unknown, did not receive any reward for their toils. On their way home, Helga and Clara took the train. What the fuck? Why didn't they get paid? Someone fucked them out of their money, probably. Someone fucked them out of their money. Some jackass. Yeah, so it started again, picked that back up again in like the 60s. And in 1980, oh. somebody's, somebody that was doing it had his team scramble to get witness signatures the whole way across so he could prove that he did it. When oh, he yeah, did it and the amount of time to, that he right? did it. Yeah. You'd, I mean, people cheat on marathons, right? They, yeah. they jump in cars on marathons and make it on the, the train. There was a guy, I think, before Pete broke the record that I think got caught cheating trying to <gasps> do it. Cause I mean, you got to document stuff pretty detailed and yeah. it's, it's crazy. Like, I mean, you'd think it would be enough just to track it on your watch and upload it. Right. But like, you know, people do goofy things. Like they get in the back of the RV, I guess, and drive really slow. But people oh, who God. are really good at like looking at those GPX files can look and see like, oh, that's not a run. That's, you know, a, they can see these variances and paces or consistencies that wouldn't be uniform with running or something like that. Oh, interesting. Well, maybe this should be some sort of a video recording of it, yeah. like if you have a GoPro in your head. I want to do a live feed and just have it Is on all Is that possible? The Satellite? Yeah, Satellite streaming? There's probably a way to do it. but uh, Yeah, that would be dope. Listen, man, we're in. We'll help you. Whatever awesome. we could do. <laughs> it sounds, sounds like a very worthy cause, and it's a crazy undertaking, and we'd be happy to promote it, too, and let everybody know and have people fucking honk their horn and drive yeah. by you. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to Dairy Queen. Yeah. See you later, Zach. <laughs>